Hi everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today we will be evaluating the following alternating binomial sum. Why are we going to do this? Because some Indian kid on Facebook challenged some other Indian kid to solve it on the Facebook page. Math facts. Definitely check it out. I use it as a great resource for all kinds of sums and integrals on this channel. And I'm going to present the other Indian kid solution to this with a, with a, a slightly different notation in the physics style. All right, just a heads up. This is going to be a very tricky video as most Indian kid videos are. It involves you knowing a series of tricks in order to get to the solution. So let's begin. First trick we're going to use is the fact that the integral from zero to one Respect to some variable x of x to the k minus 1 is equal to x to the k over k evaluated at x equals 1 and x equals 0. This limit becomes 0, of course. So the result is simply 1 over k from x being evaluated at k at, at x equals 1, of course. This is the first trick here. This is 1 over k. We're going to use this as follows we see that there is no integral in the sum above to interchange the limits of, which is a standard technique in evaluating sums. So we're actually going to introduce an integral with a new variable x that we can then interchange the limit of. So let's go ahead and write this now. Sum as k goes from one to n, and choose k minus one to the k minus one power. Now we're just using a formula 1 over k is equal to what we just derived to the integral. And now what we want to do is interchange the order of the limits and write it as follows. So we want to interchange them now. And we also want to take out a minus sign for what we're going to use in a moment, which brings us to the second trick. We are going to use the fact that minus 1 to the k minus 1, x to the k minus 1, we're going to use in the following form. It's going to be written here as minus 1 to the x minus x to the k for reasons which will become clear soon. And we write our sum in the following format. It's going to be minus the integral from 0 to 1 back to our new variable x divided by x. Now we have the sum on the inside as k goes from one to n. We have binomial coefficients n choose k of minus x to the k. So basically we have a sum here that looks something like a binomial series, which we should know how to evaluate. So we're stripping away the alternating behavior so we can get to the binomial series, which brings us to our third trick we're going to note that the sum as k goes from one to n and choose k minus x to the k is actually equal to one minus x to the nth power minus one. Why is this true? Well, it's pretty straightforward actually. Make sure I got it right here first. See, I just have to use my notes. There are just so many tricks in this video. I can't do it without my notes. Yeah, so sum k equals 1 from n, n choose k minus x to the k. Exactly, okay. This is true because the binomial theorem, or binomial expansion, as we call it in physics, states that if we have a quantity 1 plus, plus x to the n, and is typically taken to be small in physics, but we're doing math here, so x is arbitrary. It is the sum as k goes from zero to n of n choose k, x to the k. This is not quite what we want. We have the index starting at zero instead of one here, and we have an x instead of a minus x, so we can fix that. So one minus x to the n is now equal to, we're, we're letting x go to minus x in the expression here. So it's uh, k equals 0 to n, and choose k, minus x to the k. And finally, we're going to write out the first term of here. So the k equals 0 term is simply 1. 
And then we have what we want as k goes from 1 to n and choose k minus x to the k. And then you simply subtract one on both sides and you get the result that you seek here. It's pretty much a trick. Yep, lots of tricks here, but this is how you do it. Subtract one over there, get what you want. Excellent. There is one more trick. We'll get to it in a moment. First, we're going to write down what we just derived here. We're going to note that this is now minus integral from zero to one, dx over x. We're just gonna put the sum here. This is actually equal to one minus x to the n minus one. So you see what we've done here. We interchanged the values, sorry, the order of operations. We did the integral second. We did the sum first and now we're gonna do the integral since it's easier to do that. Let us now make a substitution. Let x go to one minus x, which of course tells us that uh, dx goes to minus dx. And we also have that one minus x goes to one minus one minus x, which is actually equal to x. This is an important function of the property Sorry, important property of the function one minus x is actually self-evolutional. Uh, it, it satisfies the differential equation f of f of x is equal to x. It's a it's not an idempotent, but you know it satisfies this. I forgot what it's called. Let's move on. Okay, so one minus x goes to x, and of course. We have x itself goes from one to zero. Excellent. Now we can transform our integral. We're just going to replace all instances of x by one minus x, all instances of one minus x by x. We're gonna put the minus sign for the dx and we're gonna interchange the limits of the integral. Minus integral from one to zero now minus dx over one minus x. Now we have x to the n minus one. We are going to now note that these two minus signs cancel. And, <coughs> excuse me, we want our integrals to go from zero to one. So we're gonna introduce another minus sign outside and we're gonna put it into this factor here. So we're gonna reverse the order of these factors. So our final result becomes integral from zero to one with respect to x of one minus x to the n over one minus x, which to most viewers, hopefully, you should recognize the integrand as being nothing but a finite geometric series, which we can readily integrate as follows. Integrating now. Our result is the integral from zero to one with respect to x of one plus x plus x squared plus higher terms all the way to x to the n, which of course, these are all just monomials, which we know how to evaluate using the nx m minus one rule. It's just simply x plus one half x squared plus one cubed, sorry, one third x cubed plus higher order terms till we get to one over n x to the n evaluated at x equals one x equals zero again we see that the lower limit cancels out that's just looks bad lower limit cancels out since there's a, a power of x everywhere so we have to evaluate this x equals one so it's just one plus one half plus one third plus higher terms all the way to one over n, which many viewers could recognize, recognize as the nth harmonic number, hn. So this is actually a pretty surprising result. We have the alternating series of binomial coefficients with a weight of one over k, inverse weight, actually, removes all of the alternating behavior, resulting in a sum of the reciprocals of the integers themselves. 
And that's pretty much the main result of the video today. You might ask yourself, why did I do this? What is the utility of this formula? Well, the main reason, like I indicated, is some Indian kid challenged another Indian kid. So if an Indian kid challenges you on how to evaluate a sum like this, you might want to use the first trick here, introduce an integral so you can interchange the limits. Uh, there are other reasons as well. If you are good enough, I'm, I'm actually not good enough to do this. I don't quite understand how this is done, but I know it's possible. If you wanted to, you could also use this result to evaluate this sum, k equals zero from n, n choose k, minus one to the k over k plus one. You can show that this is actually equal to one over n plus one, which you can imagine uh, the final result is subtracting hn plus 1 minus hn, which of course is 1 over n plus 1 since all the intermediate terms cancel. There's just a lot of tedious index manipulation, which I don't quite fully understand. So I can't include it in this video, but this is one use of this binomial series if you wanted to evaluate a different binomial series you wouldn't necessarily have to go back to the integral switching, though of course you could if you wanted to. And if you enjoyed this, wanted to see more math, please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.